Hello, and welcome to our message today. I'm Mona Vick, and we are going to be looking at um, the book of Ephesians. Today's message is called The Weapons of Our Warfare. <clears throat> so we've been told to put on our warfare, I mean our weapons, and God has equipped us with, with weapons to battle our enemy. We have the whole what the whole armor is a metaphor for the soldier's army. When Paul was writing Ephesians to the church of Ephesus, he wrote the letter and he sent it out to many churches. He used a metaphor um, as of the Roman soldier and you'll see in, in the slides that the Roman soldier was covered from head to toe in battle armor. He was covered from front to back and top to bottom, just like we are as believers. However, um, Ephesians 1 through 4 speaks about um, is it, it's the outline of the believer's spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Then Ephesians 6 is the Paul concludes with a complete um, metaphor of the soldier. <clears throat> Each weapon demonstrated throughout the, these and then throughout the first four chapters and then summarized in chapter six. Some of the quick highlights that you'll see on our, on our slide is from these chapters, <clears throat> sorry, are we are blessed with every sp spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We have been blessed when you come to know the Lord. You have, you have been equipped then. You are equipped right then with every single thing that you will ever need to be, to live in your relationship with God, to fight your enemy, and to have the faith that you need to move mountains. You have everything that you need. You have everything that you need. You are fully equipped. You do not need to wait. However, as we know, we need to mature in those things. You need to find out. We read the Word of God. You need to have your Word. You need to have your sword. And you need to read it. You need to get into that Word daily so that you can know what it says. You can have that relationship with the Father. You can have that relationship with the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you do not get into the Word of God, how do you know what it is that you've been fully equipped to do? You certainly, you just simply cannot. Um, so we have been blessed with everything that we need. He chose us wholly and without blame before him in love. So God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He loved us so much. And the beautiful thing of it is that he's God. He doesn't live on a, on a linear um, timeline like we, we do. He knows eternity from beginning to end. He knew that when he created the heavens and the earth, that he, he knew when he created us that we were going to fall. But from the very foundation, he made a plan of redemption. He made a plan of salvation because he loves us. 
And when we come to Him, when we come to Him, we are holy and without blame. We're everything, not because of ourselves. Oh my goodness, in ourselves, our, our, our righteousness is as filthy rags, Paul says. We're, anything that we can do to, anything that we think that we can do to make ourselves righteous, it's, it's nothing. In fact, in, in scripture, it says it's dung. It's nothing. We can't do anything in ourselves. But when we come to him, right at that moment, when we say, Jesus, be Lord of my life, he makes us pure and holy. When the Father looks at him, when the Father looks at us, he looks at us through the blood of Jesus. So he's chosen us from the foundation. He set up a a plan of redemption, then we cut, when we come to him, he looks at us not through Mona's dirtiness, not through Mona's mistakes, but through, Mo, through Jesus. He looks at Mona and he says, Mona, you're pure and you're holy because, because I see you through my son. And that's the first, that is the blessings we receive. We're adopted into God's family. We become children of the Most High God. We are sons and daughters of Christ. He has made known to us the mighty mistress, mysteries of his will. So we don't need to know, oh, what is God's will? I love one of my favorite things that, I, that Bill Johnson says. You know what God's will is? God's will is to make his, him, him known to the, to, to the lost around us and to raise the dead, cast out demons, and heal the sick. That is, our, that is God's will for our life. That's what his will, our, his will is. Love on people around you. Raise the dead, cast out demons, and heal the sick. That's what Bill Johnson says, and I love it. That is what we've, what God, that, that is what we've been called to do, in every area of your life. And when you've been, when you've been, when you have, when you have come to the Lord, from the very moment, whether you're a brand new believer or like myself, and you've been living for the Lord for forty something years. From no matter where you are in your walk, you're called to do that. No matter whether you're a kid at school, a teacher in the classroom, a banker at Wells Fargo, or the pastor in a church, that is what you're called to do. So anyways, and we have a glorious inheritance, a glorious inheritance. The lost are our inheritance, our future in heaven with Jesus is our inheritance. There's so much to living with the Lord. God is so good. So those are some things that are, are, are outlined in um, Ephesians chapters 1 through 4. So let's get back to our, our, our spiritual warfare. Um, I was taught in my early Christian years that daily we were to put on our spiritual warfare. I mean, our sport, our spiritual um, armament, our the armor of God that we were supposed to put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Shot our feet with the preparation God of, of the gospel. Take up the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. But I always wondered. Well, when did I? take them off. When did I lay them down? I don't remember doing that. And then not too long ago, the Lord gave me a revelation. He said, Mona, you never lay those down. Paul was teaching a metaphor. It was simply a picture. Because the Jewish people at that time lived within a, a system where the Romans, um, you know, had taken over Jerusalem, and they lived within that 
that um, culture, they understood that a soldier had those things and it protected them. So he used it as a picture. It wasn't something that they were going to put down. It was something that um, was easy to teach. So now let's look at what each piece Paul was telling us to keep to um, to make sure that we had on. Okay, here we go. So we receive the armor when we're saved. We have it. Everything that we need. We've already been told that. He gives us all that we need to live an abundant life. We see that in John 10.10. 10. Now the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, he came, he came to give life and life abundantly. As we mature in the Lord, we learn to use our weapons more effectively. And having all done all that we can, Praying, staying focused in the Lord, having done all that we can, we simply stand and pray. We simply stand and surrender. Okay? So now that that's what we do, let's look at each piece. So, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and excellence. Through these, He has given us His precious and magnificent promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature now that you have escaped the corruption in this world caused by evil desires that's in second peter 1 2 through 4 so we have escaped he has given us everything that we need therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the day of evil and having done all to stand stand ephesians six thirteen. using our weapons. <clears throat> okay, I think I've already gone over that. Here we go. So the belt of truth. The belt of truth in the Roman um, soldier's outfit, it covered not only his, his front part, but it covered his back part, so it was all in, encompassing, okay? Not just the little belt that we wear these days, but it was all encompassing. It protected all of his vital organs, okay? In him, you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Of promise Ephesians 1 13 so you have been sealed with the truth you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise at salvation when you accepted the truth of the gospel you put on that belt of truth stand therefore having girded your weights with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness Ephesians 6, 14. So some of these scriptures overlap, but we'll see that. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness, the sash around his waist. Isaiah 11, 5. So righteousness comes, not as we talked before, not because of what anything we could do for ourselves, lest we would boast in salvation. We did it. We saved ourselves. No, we can't do anything. We can't do anything to save ourselves. Not our good works. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of people who aren't going to make it to heaven, who did a lot of wonderful good things in this world. But because they didn't know Jesus, 
and they didn't surrender to him. They won't be with him. They'll come to the, the, the judgment seat on one day and they'll say, oh, but God, look at all the wonderful things that I did for you. And he'll say, but I didn't know you. Don't let that be you. Don't just, don't let that, don't let, don't think that the good things that you do will allow you to be in heaven. If you don't know Jesus, if you've not made him the Lord of your life, you will not make it to heaven. Don't let that be you because he loves you too much. He loves you way too much for you not to make it. And for you, for you not to live every single day of your life with him. Don't let that be you. Let his righteousness clothe you. His precious blood that he shed for you. That's the truth of the gospel. That's the belt of truth. Don't let this day go forward without you surrendering to him. Because he's so good. So, his righteousness. That belt of truth. That belt that says his goodness. He's got so many good things for us. That belt of truth. And the, the sash of, of faithfulness. He's so good, you guys. There's, he's just so good. Why would you waste it? Why would you waste this, this life walking one day, another day without him? Why would we do that? I can't imagine walking. I can't imagine walking this, the, 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 the last few years without him. Troubles come. But his word says, peace be still, for I am with you. That's the belt of truth. That even when you go through stuff, and we're going to go through stuff, he's with us. The belt of truth says, see that mountain that you're facing, that addiction that you're facing, those things that you're facing? I can set you free because whom the, who, he whom the sun sets free, He's free indeed. You may not be able to do it on your own. You may not be able to set that addiction aside on your own, but he can set you free. He can do it. He loves you so much. Don't let this day go by without allowing him to set you free. So righteousness will be the belt of truth around his hips and a faithfulness the sash around his waist he's so faithful for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth Ephesians 5 9 so the next one is the helmet of salvation so putting on the helmet of salvation in him you also trusted you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1.13 We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When we surrender to the Lord, the Holy Spirit seals us. Seals us until that day that we go home to be with Jesus. We are sealed with that promise. Not height, nor death, not principalities, not powers, not things present, not things to come. Nothing could separate us from the love of Christ because we are sealed with that promise. We are sealed, the helmet of salvation. We are sealed. I always say to the kids, <clears throat> you have a choice. You can take salvation and it can just be a ticket to ride. You can go to heaven and that can be all that salvation is. But Jesus paid so much more for us than just a ticket to ride. He paid so much more for, for us. He wants to walk daily with us. He wants to walk so, a righteous lifestyle. How many times have we had things in our life that 
I think, oh my goodness, I can't change. I can't do things. I can't. I'm just thinking recently, I'm going to be real vulnerable and honest with you. I had a, um, a reading addiction. I was addicted to reading um, romance novels that were a little steamy. And I was like, ugh. I just couldn't seem to put them down. They just were like, I just wanted to read them all the time. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, what are you putting into your mind? What are you allowing to fester in your heart? Being a single woman, I'm like, you know, but they're, they were, they fed a, a knee. They fed a, a, um, a desire that I had. And, but the Lord said, but, I need to be your desire. How much time are you spending reading these these books? And I was like, I can't put, I, I tried to put, stop it, I couldn't. And I was like, Lord, help me, I can't get this. I, can't, I, I just want to read these things. And finally, I just surrendered. I said, Lord, I can't do this on my own. Help me. And you might think, oh, well, who cares if you read a book? Well, it's what you're putting into your spirit. It's what you're putting in and putting out. And and I could be doing so much more and I could spend so much more with him. And then finally, the Lord broke that and so much more started breaking in my life and so much more, so much more intimacy with him started happening. And oh man, I'm so glad that he knows what we need. And when we can't do it on our own, his righteousness and his salvation comes in and he changes us. He works in us. And, you know, I've, like I said, I've been a Christian for over 40 years. And that's something recently I ha had to deal with. We are ch always changing. We're always moving. Our, our mind is always needing to be um, um, renewed. There's always things to just get closer to him. So... Don't beat yourself up. Whatever you're facing, don't beat yourself up. Just fall on him. Surrender to him. Let him know what you're dealing with. He knows already. Fall out. Surrender to him. Surrender to him. Okay. Righteousness comes from him. He wants to cloak you in his righteousness. All right. So. Let me get, make this bigger so I can actually see the scriptures that I'm reading. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians six seventeen. Surely you have heard him and were taught in him in keeping with the truth that is in Jesus to put off your former way of life, that former way of life, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires be renewed in the spirit of your minds Ephesians 4 21 through 23 we know that our old self was conceived with him um, sorry crucified with him so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless that we should no longer be slaves to sin Romans 6 6 he came and preach peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. Ephesians 2.17 We need his peace. And it only comes by surrendering. It only comes. That's the, you know, that's, I think, is one of the most powerful weapons that we have. Is to surrender. When we surrender, the enemy is lost. He knows that he's defeated already, but when we surrender in our daily life, he's like, it's, it's done. It's done. She's, she's in his care. She's surrendered to him. I have no power. When we are surrendered, the enemy is lost. Um, so... Goodness, I lost my scripture. So gave him he gave himself up to her. He gave himself up for her 
to sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a glorious church without stain or wrinkle or any such blemish, but holy and blameless. Ephesians 5.26 He wants us to be renewed. He wants us to continuously, line upon line, precept on precept, come into a renewal to be spotless and blameless before Him so that we can be just like Him. Every day, we need to be growing closer and closer to um, to be aware, to be like Jesus. All right, let's move on. If I know where I'm at. We're almost through there. Okay, so now we're going to look at that breastplate. For He Himself is our peace who has made the two one and has torn down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees. So he's taken away the old law. He did this to create in himself one new man out of his, out of the two, thus making peace. So the old law, we couldn't do it. We could not keep it. Every year they had to sacrifice. Every year they had to send out the scapegoat. We couldn't keep it. But Jesus came and he fulfilled it. And reconciling both of them to God in one body through the cross by which he extinguished the hostility. For he himself is our peace who has made the two one and has torn down the dividing wall of hostility. You know that hostility means that we're torn, we are fighting, we can't do it. We just can't do it and it breaks our heart and it breaks us in so many ways. We just can't do it. But he came to the cross. He came to the cross. By abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees, he did this to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace and reconciling both of them to God in one body through the cross, which he extinguished their hostility. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has torn down the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees, he did this to create in himself, I keep reading this over and over. <gasps> Sorry. So Ephesians 2, 14 and 18. Um, he did it for us on the cross. Um, Stand firm, therefore, having belted your ways with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, Ephesians 6, 14, in him and through faith in him, we may enter God's presence with boldness and confidence, Ephesians 3, 12. There is, no one, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, Ephesians 4, 4. So he protects us. He went to the cross for us. It is by his stripes. It is by him that we have salvation. It is by him that we are made righteous. Okay. So the breast, the shield of faith. So we're going to take up the shield of faith. And here we say, here we have, I pray that the eyes of my, of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe? There are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion 
and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Ephesians 1, 18 through 23. Our faith in Jesus Christ. That is our shield. The faith that we have in Jesus, that he is all in all. He is everything that we need. Everything that we need. We believe in him. He is our strength. It is by his might that he, he cares for us. It is by his might that he does everything. He is the king of kings. He protects us. He leads us. He guides us. He is everything. He is everything that we need. He is everything that we need for, for life and godliness. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ephesians 6, 16. He will give us the strategies. He will give us the things that we need in order to fight the wicked one in our life. The things that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, God will raise up a standard. He will raise up a standard to protect us, to help us, to 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 give us everything that we need. He will do it. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Isaiah eleven twelve. The spirit of the Lord will give us everything that we need. He will give us wisdom. He will give us understanding. He will give us counsel and strength. As you seek his word, as you seek his face, as you get into your quiet place and you just and you just surrender to the Lord, he will give you the strategies that you need. He will give you the strategies that you need to tear down the principalities and powers. He will give you those things. And then finally, the only weapon that we have that is an offensive weapon is the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. But you did not learn Christ in this way. Indeed, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth put on the new mind which is how we daily daily getting in in your quiet time daily renewing our mind through the word of God that is how we seek him that is how we put on the new man. That is how we do that. We daily are being renewed by seeking his word, by praying, by seeking his face, by praying in the Holy Spirit. Those are the things that renew us. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians six seventeen. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 Everything that we need is in this word. As we seek his word, as we seek his face, as we get into our quiet time, as we pray in the Holy Spirit, he will give us everything that we need to battle the enemy, to have the strategies that we need to live a godly life. Finally, we need to stand. Having done all that we can do, we stand. Stand by being strong in his might, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and walking together, sharpening one another. 
You know, one of the favorite things, um, I forget what the name of the movie is. It might be, oh, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it's one of the old, um, or one of the recent movies with the the Roman gladiators, um, and they're all coming together, and there's a scene where they're all together, and they have their shields up, and they, they're fighting the enemy. They all tuck down together. Their shields are up, their swords are up, and they're all tucked down. Mo many of you may know what that movie is. I forget names of movies real quickly, but they're all tucked down, and the, the arrows are coming down, and they can't be, they're, they can't be hurt because of how they're standing together. And um, we're like that as a body. We're like that as, as the church. When we come together and we assemble together, we stand arm in arm and, and, and connected by the shield of faith and by the sword of the spirit. Um, when we're like that together and we're connected with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's hard to hurt us. It's the enemy cannot come against us when we're standing arm in arm and and, and shield to shield. They can, he cannot harm us because we're standing united. We're standing united. When we're like that, the enemy is defeated and God's church is strong. So come together. It's one of our strongest um, pieces of our armament, sharpening one another, encouraging one another. The armor never comes off. However, it can, it can become unusable when we're not good stewards of his word and truths. Maturity comes when you walk daily, utilizing each piece of the armor and pursuing the purpose of your call in Christ. Now I know we went through a lot of scriptures this morning today. Um, I hope that you were able to 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 understand that Ephesians is about the weapons of our warfare. Everything that we have, everything that we need, God has already given us. We just need to to be mindful of it, use them, and stand. Stand strong. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening to our message. If you'd like to know more about us or would like to give online, please visit us at ctfpolder.com. We hope you have a blessed rest of your day.